I'm Dr. Alan Blum, director of the University of Alabama Center for the Study of Tobacco and Society. Welcome to Fault, Tennis, Tobacco, and Virginia Slims, the third in our ongoing series on the history of tobacco sponsorship of sports. Sports plus tobacco equals a losing team is the name of the first exhibition on tobacco sponsorship of sports, especially baseball and football, that was on view at the Paul Bear Bryant Museum during 2020. An online version can be viewed on csts.ua.edu. 2021 marks the 50th anniversary of the first full year of sponsorship of women's professional tennis by a cigarette maker. The 19 tournaments of the Virginia Slims women's tennis circuit began in January 1971. A not-so-funny thing happened on the way to planning this exhibition. In September of 2020, a reporter for Sports Business Journal, Brett McCormick, contacted me for comment for a shorter story he was writing to balance the main story on the 50th anniversary of the launch of Philip Morris's Virginia Slims Tennis Circuit. Hi, Dr. Blum. I'm working on a story for Sports Business Journal about the original nine, the women's tennis pioneers that paved the way for tennis to become the elite sport globally for women in nearly every way you could measure, he wrote. A big part of that story, the beginning at least, is Philip Morris's and Virginia Slim's backing of women's tennis. Women's tennis wouldn't be what it is today without the backing of big tobacco, which is a weird thing to think about. Reporter McCormick had come across some of the articles I'd written through the years and thought I would be just the guy to comment. Indeed, I provided him with a lot of details of the darker side of Virginia Slim's. Yet when the story came out in the September 7th issue of the Sports Business Journal, I found no reference to anything I said or provided. When I wrote to the reporter, he replied that we ended up not doing anything specific on Philip Morris, in part because the topic is much bigger than the room we had for it, in part because the oral history of the original nine consumed so much of the space I was allotted. It was hard not to be cynical after reading that we ended up not doing anything specific on Philip Morris when the third page of the four-page article was entirely devoted to Philip Morris and prominent mentions of the cigarette company were throughout the article. And the reporter had originally cited Philip Morris's backing of women's tennis as a big part of the story of how women's tennis became an elite global sport. Although the reporter claimed that the focus of the story was on the original nine women who agreed to the deal with the tobacco company 50 years before, he also interviewed Ellen Merlo, the Marlboro marketing director of Philip Morris, and thought it would only be fair to get my viewpoint about a cigarette sponsor when he contacted me. I hardly expected that his article would be a puff piece about Philip Morris that will be in the inbox of every one of its cigarette brand managers. The irony of the reporters referring to the original nine's risk-taking and, and for Martina Navratilova to echo that description is a special kind of chutzpah, considering the risks countless women have taken on any number of issues over the past century. And of course, there's the risk of taking up cigarettes. Tell me the original nine could give a damn. No mention was made in the article that there was a gap in title sponsorship in 1978 and that the players rejected certain types of products as sponsored that would be bad for their image, like tampons. But cigarettes were never a problem for these players. Many top athletes chose to play for tobacco-sponsored sports through the years, but tennis player Billie Jean King won up them all by joining the Philip Morris Company's board of directors in 1999. If that isn't commitment, then nothing is. Of course, one could argue that when the New York Times ran editorials against smoking beginning in the 1960s, it didn't stop accepting cigarette advertisements until 1999 or 35 years following the publication of the landmark Surgeon General's report, and even then continued to accept Philip Morris's corporate ads touting the company's art sponsored food banks, women's shelters, and literacy efforts. But it didn't take many years following its introduction in 1968 in the midst of the women's liberation movement for Virginia's slim cigarettes to become a synonym for many things, including women's tennis. The effect of the spiking of the sidebar of the reporter's article on the 50th anniversary of the Virginia Slims is one of an unchallenged puff piece that glorifies the original nine and ignores the fact that the ties between women's tennis and a cigarette sponsor were condemned by health professionals throughout the duration of the Virginia Slims circuit. It's all the more puzzling, too, since I and others have long been quoted in this regard in other sports business publications through the years. So it was hard to believe that in 2020, Sports Business Journal would not include criticism of Philip Morris, Virginia Slims, and Billie Jean King, especially when such criticism was leveled at them in each decade from the 1970s on, and when players including Renee Richards and Andrea Yeager expressed regret for playing for a cigarette sponsor, and when numerous protest demonstrations were held at Virginia Slims venues in the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s. I know this because in 1970s, 1970s, 
1988, I organized the first physician's house calls on the Virginia Slims women's tennis circuit, which we renamed the Emphysema Slims. We then created an actual Emphysema Slim sports festival at both the local and national levels in the 1980s and early 1990s. These featured real celebrities as well as mock celebrities, such as Martina No Smokanova and Billie Jean Butthead. As a result, Philip Morris hired a public relations firm to monitor my activities, and the intelligence reports are in the tobacco industry documents that one can view online through websites of the University of California at San Francisco. Three of these reports, compiled by Reed Poland and Associates, are in the section of this exhibition dedicated to Doctors Ought to Care. Toward the end of Virginia Slim's sponsorship, the company found religion by turning it into Virginia Slim's Legends to benefit AIDS research. It even had a medical advisory board that included some of the most well-known physicians, such as chest surgeons Michael DeBakey and Denton Cooley. Of course, the Sports Business Journal article glosses over the fact that tobacco sponsorship of sports was banned under the provisions of the Master Settlement Agreement between the state attorneys general and the cigarette makers in 1998, for the simple reason that it was an effective way of recruiting teenagers to smoke cigarettes. Unlike 50 years ago, when a magazine or newspaper might have been afraid of losing cigarette revenue for speaking out, it's both sad and absurd that Sports Business Journal would publish such a gushing, one-sided glorification of the original nine and Virginia Slim's tennis in 2020. So this exhibition lays bare the dark and cynical side of women's professional tennis that Sports Business Journal deliberately left out.